Hey guys, it's Kelly. Welcome back to my channel. And I'm really excited because today is part two of my epic sunscreen testing quest. So today's video is all about mineral filters. I have four physical sunscreens that are fragrance free, essential oil free and alcohol free. I know it's hard to find them. I've rounded up four. I've tested them thoroughly and I'm really excited to share them with you. So if you are so ready for this video, give it a big thumbs up and let's get started. So since I am just a little bit sensitive to mineral filters, I did not want that to cloud my judgment and my reviews on these products. So I recruited a little bit of help. Uh, not only have I tested these out, you know, personally, I have handed these over to my mom and I've had her test them out as well. Now she does also have sensitive skin, but unlike me, she's not prone to dehydration. She is actually very sensitive to the sun, whereas if I go outside without sunscreen, I'm probably going to get tan. If she goes outside without sunscreen, she's going to get a rash. So she's almost the perfect guinea pig for this. I also am going to be judging these based in four different areas and I'm going to be giving, assigning them points for each one. So um, the, those areas of critique are texture, the application, the feel on the skin, white cast, really big one. I'm also going to be grading it on how it reapplies to the skin. Does it work with makeup and how easily does it remove from the skin at the end of the night? And then also a fourth area that is going to be um, how drying is the sunscreen because mineral sunscreens do have a tendency to zap a little bit of moisture from the skin. So I'll be grading them on all four areas. So the first product is the Biore UV Kids Pure Milk SPF 50 PA plus three. Now this is a J Beauty sunscreen and guys, woohoo, this is a waterproof sunscreen. Oh yes. Now kids, can only kids use it? Like what's, why, why are you using a kid's sunscreen, Kelly? Um, actually, this is for those of you who do prefer to avoid fragrance and alcohols in your sunscreen, this can be kind of a quick shortcut to finding products with ingredients lists uh, that you're happy with because kids products in J Beauty and even in um, K Beauty tend to avoid alcohols, drying alcohols and fragrances. So let's talk ingredients. This uses 18.2% of zinc oxide and zinc oxide oxide is like literally the best UV filter out there today. Not just in mineral sunscreen, there's really only two, two mineral filters, but in chemical sunscreens as well, it really just rises to the top because it's extremely photostable. It is got some of the best broad spectrum protection available today. It covers UVB, UVA, UVA1, UVA2. Like it is very, very protective. However, <laughs> just like everything, right? There is a good and bad side to everything. The kind of like downside to zinc oxide is that it's real white real white. This is where the white cast comes from because zinc oxide and titanium dioxide, which we're going to talk about in just a second, you know, these are actually components that make up white paint. That's how white they are. So that is definitely a really big downside to this filter. In the general world of mineral filters, really, there's only two to talk about. So we talked about zinc and now we're going to talk about titanium dioxide. Now, this is really similar to zinc in that it is a uh, photostable and it has a very good broad spectrum protection. However, a little bit less than zinc. So it's always good to see these two combined together. I do like to see antioxidants antioxidants in sunscreens as well. Uh, it does kind of just help boost the overall formulation and protection of your sunscreen. This particular one uses vitamin E. It is really liquidy, really runny, milky kind of texture. As you work this onto your skin, you might freak out. <laughs> just at, like I did, I was like, oh no, it feels it feels a little greasy between your fingers, just a little, like like there's like a good emolliency to this. But uh, fear not, because once it does absorb and dry down into the skin, it actually has a little bit more of a powder finish to it. Um, it's really bizarre, but uh, like no fear, no shine, no grease, no heaviness. It, once it's dried down, it's got a really pleasing feel on the skin. And the lack of the alcohol in this particular liquidy formula is noticeable because it does take a really long time to absorb in the skin. Now, I usually over apply my sunscreen because I can never tell the difference between not enough and just the right amount. So I just go overboard. 
<laughs> more is more, right? So I, I usually put too much on. Even so, uh, it took me a really long time to work this in. I had to get some elbow grease in there and it still wasn't getting it. I was actually starting to get a little frustrated about it. Um, but once it did absorb into my skin, uh, it did have that pleasing, lightweight, almost powder feel to the skin. And it didn't feel heavy or greasy, but I definitely have to take some points off because it does take a little bit of effort to get into your skin. So out of 10 points, I'm gonna assign this one six points, white cast. Now, every single one of these sunscreens has a white cast. So it's kind of like in relation to each one of these. This is not the worst white cast, but it's not the one with the least white cast. It kind of falls somewhere in the middle. Now on me, it's definitely noticeable. You know, I, I got a little color to me, but I'm still kind of on the pale side. So I can get away with some of this, this white cast. On me, it's a little bit more of a tone up effect, um, but it does it does kind of pale me out a little bit. Now my mom's super duper pale, much paler than me. She is white and she actually still noticed a little bit of a white cast on her skin as well. So um, it's not the worst one, it's not the best one. So I'm gonna grade this a six out of 10 on white cast. You know, this feels so incredibly lightweight on the skin when you apply it to begin with, but it's so pleasing when you put the second reapplication on, the third reapplication on, it does not build up thick on the skin. It still maintains that light feel, which is great. No pilling. It doesn't build up greasy or anything like that. And I was really pleased that this did not cling to any dry patches that I had on my skin. I was kind of fully expecting it too, because some of these milk formulations with sunscreens tend to do that on me, but this one did not. It worked extremely well with my makeup as well. Now let's talk removal. Remember, this is a waterproof sunscreen. Waterproof sunscreens are made to wear really tough and long on the skin. They create a really good barrier on your skin and that makes it difficult to remove. As much as you had to have elbow grease to get into your skin, you need a little elbow grease to get it off. That is how waterproof sunscreens function. So I don't want to remove too many points just for that alone. So I am going to give this a seven out of 10. The fourth uh, category that I want to talk about is um, dryness um, because I am actually pretty sensitive to uh, mineral sunscreen filters. They do tend to take a little bit of moisture from my skin and it aggravates my dehydration. So for me personally, I actually found this very comfortable mineral sunscreen to wear. Um, I could go, I went pretty much the entire day without feeling too tight or too dry. It really wasn't that rough on my skin. I was really pleasantly surprised by this. I found this to be a really, really gentle option, especially for some who struggles with mineral sunscreen. So I'm gonna be giving this a nine out of 10. So that gives this sunscreen a final score of 28 points out of 40. This sunscreen, pretty affordable as well. I bought this for about $13 on YesStyle and for that price you get 70 milliliters of product. Now let me share with you my mom who also tested all four of these sunscreens. This was actually her least favorite one. <laughs> this was one of my top rated sunscreens. This is one of her least and really for for her, she did not like the texture of this. The milkiness of this sunscreen, she didn't really appreciate that. And she felt like it was um, a drain on her time in the morning to really work this into her skin. And that was a, a massive turnoff for her. We had some interesting opinions, but I think across the board, um, this is still a very good sunscreen option, especially if you need waterproof. Isn't Tree Sensitive Balancing Sun Protection SPF 50 plus with a P a of plus four. And of course this uses zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. We do not know the percentages in this particular sunscreen. And you may have noticed this in the K beauty space when it comes to sunscreens. They don't tell you how much is in the sunscreen. They will not release the percentages. And it's like, what are you hiding? Like, why can't you tell me? And I think it's a couple of reasons. Number one, you know, they do not want to be ripped off. They do not want to be ripped off. And you, if you've been like a fan of K-Beauty for a while, you notice there are some copycats going on. I also learned um, from Leah Yu that actually most Korean sunscreens are manufactured from some of like a handful of the 
same manufacturers. So the brands will go to the manufacturer, there will be kind of a base formula, and the brand might tweak some things here and there to kind of put their own personal spin on it. But generally speaking, you can find almost the exact same formula between brand to brand to brand to brand if they were made from the same manufacturer. So there's not a ton of variety happening. That might be why they they are very secretive about the percentages as well. I'm not exactly sure. It's a couple of thoughts on that. Antioxidants in the Isn't Tree sunscreen. We've got green tea extract and centella. It does look like quite a thick uh, mineral sunscreen. Very, very white, right? This actually, once you're uh, working it into your skin, it actually feels a little bit more like a moisturizer. So it actually is a very pleasing sort of texture as you work it onto your skin. I would classify this as a more medium weight um, sunscreen. And in fact, I would say that out of the four that we're talking about today, this is the uh, on the heavier side for the sunscreens. You could definitely use this as a moisturizer, definitely a little bit on the, the thicker side um, when it comes to the weight on the skin. So because of that, I'm gonna be giving this a six out of 10. This definitely has the white cast. In my personal opinion, this has the strongest white cast out of all four of these. Um, this is, again, on me, more of that tone up effect. It does pale me out. It, you can tell that I'm wearing a mineral sunscreen. It's not the worst thing in the world. It's definitely tolerable but it is probably the most noticeable out of all four of them. And so for that alone, yeah, I definitely got to mark it down a little bit. I'm going to be giving it a four out of 10. I was actually shocked to find out that this sunscreen did not pill on reapplication. I was so expecting it. I think because it does feel so um, medium weight on the skin. And once you add another layer on, it builds up in weight. It doesn't get greasy, but it does build up in weight on the skin. As far as makeup applications, application like a dream. This actually applies really nicely on top. You know, not only did it feel like a moisturizer when you put it on, I think it really kind of functions in that way as well. I did not get any um, clinging to any dry patches either. So it just, it looked really good on minus the white cast and it does remove really easily from the skin too. I didn't feel like I had to be extra diligent in my cleansing process. So pretty pleased with this category on the sunscreen. I'm going to give it a seven out of 10. This definitely made my skin feel real dry and tight. Um, it uh, is one of those sunscreen that compounds. And what I mean by that is the longer uh, that you wear it and the more days in a row that you wear it, the dehydration just gets worse. It's worse on day five than it was on day one. Um, where sun sunscreens, it's basically the same every single day. It's just, you know, that whisper of dehydration. This actually kind of starts to get worse and worse on me personally. So it didn't really perform that well in that area. In my opinion, I'm going to give it a four out of 10. So that gives this sunscreen a final score of 21 out of 40 points. This retails around $17 and you'll get 60 milliliters. Now my mom, she actually, interesting, she said on her, she's paler than me, she hardly saw a white cast on this one. So I wonder if the white cast just, um, uh, flatters her undertones more than it flatters mine because I felt that it was very noticeable on me but um, on her she felt like it didn't show up at all which was interesting she did uh, feel she didn't like the medium weightness of this cream she actually called it greasy and kind of heavy so she didn't really appreciate the the weight of this sunscreen uh, she does use it over her other moisturizer as well um, and she did feel some dryness from this sunscreen so she actually personally rated this a six out of ten so slightly more favorable opinion than mine but still I think we can both agree that this is just a little bit more of an average sunscreen Soon Jung Mild Defense Sun Cream SPF 49 PA plus two. So of course this uses zinc and titanium, but the um, unique thing is that they're using nanoparticles. What that does, is it actually kind of breaks that molecule up, makes it really, really small. And when you do that, you have a little bit more as the formulator, a little bit more control over how much white cast is coming off of the sunscreen filters. And it does improve the texture of the sunscreen. It makes it a lot more spreadable. So that really thick kind of paste, it really does improve the elegance 
of the overall texture. As far as antioxidants go, we've got matacasicide, there's skull cap root, and we also have vitamin E and green tea. You can really see the nanoparticles at play in the texture here because it is a very pleasing light texture with really good spreadability. You know, um, the isn't tree was so thick, right? This is just so light in comparison. Um, really, really pleasing texture. Now, this absorbs in the skin really nicely, but you do have to work it in just a little bit. Not as much as the first two that we talked about, but it, you know, a little bit of effort goes a long way with this sunscreen. I definitely feel like it like made my skin feel quite soft and uh, silky. Uh, this does contain silicone, so it is a little bit of that kind of silicone effect to this texture, but it wasn't overly heavy and it's not overly occlusive. I actually found it really light and pleasant and I'm gonna give this one a 6 out of 10 on texture. Now on the white cast front, you know what? This was not that bad at all. When I was first putting this on, I was like, oh no, it's another really white pasty mineral sunscreen, right? Like great. Um, but uh, once you kind of let that settle in, it's almost like BB cream. You know, you put BB cream on, you're like, eh, this isn't right. And then in a couple minutes it kind of adjusts to your skin tone, and you're like, oh, actually, it's not so bad. It, it, it adjusted. I felt like this sunscreen adjusted. White cast, for me, not that big of a deal on this one. I'm gonna give it a seven out of 10. Reapplication was really easy with this one. This does not pill on the skin. Um, and it is something that applies really light on first application, but it doesn't build up in thickness as you continue to reapply throughout the day. I was really impressed by that. Works perfectly with makeup, does not cling to dry patches. Very easy to remove at the end of the night as well. I didn't have to scrub at this one. So really pleased in this category. I'm gonna give it an eight out of 10. For me personally, this really did not dry out my skin. It was actually a very comfortable sunscreen to wear. This is probably in that department, this is probably the second least drying on my skin. It didn't really aggravate dehydration. Very, very comfortable to wear. I was very pleased with this. Definitely gotta rate it a seven out of 10. And that gives this sunscreen a final score of 29 out of 40 points. This sunscreen, you get 50 milliliters and I bought my bottle for $10. So it's a really affordable product. Now my mom, she actually liked this one too. This was also her second favorite sunscreen on this list. We definitely are in agreement on this one. She gave it a seven out of 10. The only thing is she said that this gave her a white cast, which I just, I find this whole white cast thing is so individual, uh, so individual, but she was a little bit more bothered by that. I, I'll admit, I might be a little bit more accepting of it because it just felt so comfortable on my skin. The Purito Comfy Water Sunblock SPF 50 Plus PA Plus 4. Purito, a Korean company that did not want to release the percentages of their sunscreen, just like every other K-beauty company out there. However, because they're in tune, because they listen, they did actually eventually release that. Enough people wanted to know. So this sunscreen contains 3% of zinc oxide and just a little bit less than 1% of titanium dioxide. Is that enough? Because, you know, that sounds kind of low. If you recall the other sunscreen on the list that we knew the percentage of zinc, it was 18.2% in the Biore Kids sunscreen. So 3% sounds really low. Like, is it enough? Now, the one thing that I can tell you is it, this is not a um, either or situation when it comes to percentages. You know, it's not just about how much zinc is in a formula. It's about the overall formulation because that can make or break the um, the protection of the overall sunscreen. It's not just percentages alone. I spent so much time trying to figure out, is this enough? I went to some of my most trusted resources. I went to dermatologists. I went to cosmetic chemists. Nobody seems to be able to answer this question. At least nobody has yet, um, which is very disappointing. And I'm sorry, I'm not gonna be the one to like blow your mind with an explanation either. I just don't know. The best sunscreen for you is the one that you can you can not only just tolerate, but you are joyful to wear every single day. So if this is one that um, makes you feel good, makes your skin feel good, and provides adequate coverage without you know burning in the sun, 
for you personally, then it's definitely um, a good sunscreen. If you're uncomfortable and feel that that's not enough, then this is not the sunscreen for you. Now, other goodies on the ingredients list, now that we've gotten that out of the way, right, um, include uh, the four active compounds of centella. Plus, this also contains niacinamide, a really great sunscreen booster. This happens to be the only silicone-free sunscreen on the list. The texture of this is just so mind-blowing. Wow, it's so incredibly light. Like it definitely has that really elegant feel. And as you work this um, onto your skin, glide it across your skin, you get this burst of hydration. It feels very, very cooling and refreshing on the skin. And in fact, they say that this contains a 70% water base. So they really are going for that, that hydrating type of feel and they definitely have achieved it. This like absorbs and dries down like on the skin like immediately so 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 quickly this is the most pleasing texture on this list this gets a 10 out of 10 from me white cast hardly any at all like everything about this sunscreen the white cast and the texture i'm like is this a mineral sunscreen it's quite mind-boggling yeah i really i really don't detect any white cast on my skin tone with this one like at all Maybe a maybe a maybe a whisper, but honestly, I really just don't see it. I do I do see that if, as you get a little bit more melanated, right? You're a little bit more blessed with melanin. You will start to notice this a little bit more. But that being said, this is definitely one of the mineral sunscreens that is going to be the most friendly to darker skin tones. Like not just even out of these four sunscreens like in all of k-beauty this is probably one of the most friendly mineral sunscreens to those who are blessed with melanated skin so this is definitely a good one for you guys out there this one i'm gonna rate because of that an 8.5 out of 10. this is actually an amazing sunscreen if you have oily skin because there's some really good oil um, controlling properties to this one it's very mattifying for the skin this will keep your t-zone shine free even far into the afternoon However, a really big thing with this sunscreen that not everybody experiences, but a lot of people do, pilling. It can pill on the first application, it can pill on reapplication, and even though it doesn't make your makeup look bad, you might get a little pilling when you apply like a full coverage foundation or something. So. This is a huge downside to this. Uh, I suspect it's the 70% water base to the sunscreen because um, a lot of times we're using emollients in our moisturizers, facial oils. Sometimes even we have a little bit more emollient kind of base makeup, right? Oil and water do not mix. That is definitely gonna make pilling happen. Not everybody gets the pilling. I have experienced it. It's a massive downfall to this product. Because of that, I'm giving it a four out of 10. Now, as far as dryness, yeah, it's there. There is a whisper of dryness to, the, the, to this one. However, out of the four that we're talking about today, in my mind, this is the best one for me personally. In this category, I'm gonna give it an eight out of 10. So that gives this sunscreen a 30.5 out of 40 points. It retails around $17. You can oftentimes get it for much less on sale and you get about 60 milliliters for that price. Now, my mom, uh, she this was her favorite sunscreen. She was like real into the sunscreen immediately. She gave this a nine out of 10. and. When I asked her, I was like, okay, so what did you think about this one? I actually wrote down word for word what she said because it was so brilliant. It was so perfect. It feels like skincare. It feels like it was meant to be on my face. <laughs> It's so, it's such a perfect explanation though, because that texture is just so pleasing. It is so easy to work with. It didn't like set her back in time, working it into her skin or waiting for it to dry down. She is mostly a chemical sunscreen uh, person as well. Um, some of these textures really threw her for a loop, I think, but this one was just like so across the board, perfect for her. Interesting, she didn't get pilling. Like I always get pilling with this. She did not get pilling. As I, I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if she does not wear sunscreen or she's not wearing enough sunscreen, she's not being protected, she will break out into a rash from sun exposure. She's very sun sensitive. It's really like yucky, raised, red rash. She did not get this from that from this sunscreen. I know, you know, some people think it may not offer enough coverage for her. 
um, you know, in and out of the car, driving to work, walking the dog, just very daily sunscreen usage. This kept her protected and covered perfectly. So I hope you guys enjoy that really epic sunscreen review, both this video and the chemical sunscreen video. I had a lot of fun testing all of these out for you. And I just want to say, you know, if you are still looking for your perfect sunscreen, I know how frustrating it is. It is very time consuming. It is very difficult, right? Just don't give up. Please keep looking if you haven't found the very perfect one yet. It is worth it. It's a quest, but it's definitely worth it. Now, I'm curious to know, have you found your perfect sunscreen yet or not? Let me know in the comment box. Are you still looking? Have you found it? Are you just okay with what you have right now? If you haven't subscribed to my channel, but this video was really helpful for you, please consider subscribing. I release two new Korean skincare focused videos every single week. Turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any of the videos. And sometimes I I upload bonus content so definitely you don't want to miss out on any of the content that I release so I hope you guys are having a great day I can't wait to see you in the next video I hope you are healthy happy and safe and I'm gonna to talk to you soon bye